What it is, folks. Uh, I'm here with a uh, kind of just news coverage in the world development video for our channel. Uh, this is outside my normal coding tutorial stuff, but it's still nonetheless, hopefully, just as interesting for those stumbling upon this. Hi, hello. Uh, you've probably heard that ancient prophecy that jQuery is the she's dead gem of frameworks, right? I mean, we all been there. Well, strap in and engage them word drives, because jQuery 4.0.0 uh, just beamed down like the USS Enterprise on a rescue mission, proving it's not only alive, but also kicking and ready to revolutionize web development again. It's the wait, dash more of frameworks. What am I going to say, right? Uh, anyone who's been out there, you know, jQuery is definitely a fairly, in my opinion, still phenomenal JavaScript library framework. Yeah, framework sounds right. That back in the golden age of the internet transformed the chaos of browsers and incompatibilities into a peaceful Zen garden. Um, I remember, you know, it made navigating DOM manipulation much easier, event handling. It made Ajax Super simple as replicating a slice of your favorite pie. Not just any pie, mind you, but the kind that would make Homer say, ooh, floor pie. So let's be real. I mean, I know a lot of folks treat jQuery like it's an old band t-shirt from high school. Tons of nostalgia, sure, but it's not quite fitting into your modern wardrobe. So it's pretty cool to see that they're still working on it. They're, you know, updating that t-shirt, slapping on a fresh design, fixing up them fibers, and putting it back into the spotlight of our go-to uh, daily wear. Uh, so, you know, this is beta, uh, as noted, you'll, you'll find like Reddit threads that talk about this, that, you know, a lot of the times like some middle level update of voted comment says, folks, it's beta, it's not production ready, but nevertheless, I figured I'd cover it here because it's some news that you wouldn't expect to get at the beginning of 2024 in a world of React, Angular, Vue, um, Svelte, all these, all these DOM related component based frameworks and things like that, you know, are coming out. And updating like crazy, then you have things like Next, Gatsby, or not Gatsby, but Next and Remix still pumping up the crazy React stuff. And it's kind of weird to see something like jQuery still making headlines. So uh, let's get us a TLDR of what actually is going on here. Uh, for those of you that just want the information fast, I get that. I know what it's like. So in terms of TLDR, we are dropping uh, IE 11 support. Browsers older than IE 11, Edge Legacy, iOS version 11 or lower, Firefox 65, Android browser. I mean, it makes sense. You got to aim for leaner, more efficient version, and it helps you reduce size notably, which is also important. You got some deprecated APIs that streamline the library and also improve performance. I'm the, I can't think I actually use any one of these like is array. I don't think I've used any of these. If y'all have, get in the comments and let me know where you've used these. A lot of these, like, you know, I know, like, jQuery has a trim, but evidently I would always just use the string trim that was always in there. But maybe this was around before uh, JavaScript had a native trim function. I don't know if it did or not. I don't. I probably should have looked that up before this video, but whatever. Is array? I know there's, like, an array. There's a better way to do that in JavaScript these days, but maybe that's what spurned the, the thing. That's what was so cool about jQuery, y'all. Don't forget, like, it introduced a lot of these, like, things that we use in modern vanilla JavaScript back in the day was introduced with jQuery and the quality of life it brought. So yeah, uh, you know, push ports. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. All this stuff is just things we already use in JavaScript on the native array object. And these methods, I remember some of these didn't act like other jQuery methods. And that's my favorite thing where some things have different call signatures than others. It's just a nightmare. Uh, okay, it's cool that it, you know, it, it streamlines some event handling order and things like that. I'm not going to get into the specifics here. The TLDR is that it reorders some events to make them, uh, more in line with native behavior and things like that. That's cool. Hey, that's that, what was nifty, I thought, was the, uh, additions, additional support of, uh, form data and binary data, AJAX requests, which definitely accommodate more modern web development needs. Uh, this was pretty interesting to read as well, that they uh, switched from AMD to ES modules, which gives us JS, modern JS developers a lot, uh, a lot more ease of integration into our modern JavaScript projects. Should we take that route, especially with Node and NPM? I almost want to make a whole other video on Node and NPM because there's like this overly heated debate, IMO, uh, about having a default bundler such as aka NPM with Node. If y'all are interested in that discussion and the ideas behind it, let me know. I can make a video on it, uh, giving you my take, my, the, the facts of the case, and then my take on it if y'all want. 
Uh, you know, updating a slim build, trusted types and CSP. CSP, uh... Okay, yeah, so, I mean, this basically is, uh... Enhancing security support for trusted types lying with content security policy. I like how my, I had a brain fart there. I'm not going to edit it out. I don't have an editor anyway besides myself, and I'm too lazy to do it. I'm going to leave that brain fart in there of me staring at CSP going, wait, I know what this means, and it's probably somewhere on the screen here. Yeah, content security policy. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's cool. So that's really interesting to do that, and slim build has been minimized even further, uh, reducing its size by removing those deferreds, callbacks, deferreds and callbacks, Emphasizing the library shift towards native promises where possible. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, JavaScript promises are cool. I use them a lot. I meme with them a lot in our Discord channel as well. Um, y'all, y'all know that if anyone comes from is watching this video from our Discord community group, whether you're a Catalyst, uh, an old molecular student, an old alumni of ours, or you're currently in our community membership, check the description down below if you have interest in that. Um, yeah, I use promises a lot when doing, uh, memes and things like that for code blocks. And it's also something really fun to write and understand you feel cool getting it. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's accessible via jQuery CDN, like it always is and NPM, which is, uh, nice. Uh, and they have an upgrade guide probably telling y'all how to, yeah, I mean, they have the full change log for the 4.0 beta. And then again, this is beta, so I have no idea what's still going to be changed here. And I'm sure there's going to be like a change log or migration guide on how, uh, how to move forward. So test, leave feedback. I mean, if y'all have interest, I would love to build something goofy as a project with jQuery uh, on a YouTube video series here on our channel for Covalence. So if you have interest in me building something, go for it. Let me know. You know, we, we have a jQuery lecture, like a lecture series in our course. Uh, and, you know, we, we've talked about removing it, and we've actually kept it in, even though you'll have individuals that still join, you know, our, our curriculum or start going through it, or they look into it, and they're like, y'all, jQuery? Why do you still use jQuery, right? And, you know, I'm not going to lie in that I, you know, of course we sit there and think, you know, why do we do this? Does anyone actually use this anymore? And it's a startling fact of how much jQuery is indeed uh, used in the modern era, it would highly, highly surprise you guys and gals out there that it's use of statistics. This is on trends.builtwith.com. That seems like it's linked fairly regularly, like on Reddit threads and Stack Overflow posts I have found of usages for certain like languages or technologies, frameworks, blah, blah, blah. jQuery being an easy one to look at here. Uh, we're looking, you know, for those, I'll, I'll have the link to this in the description down below of this video so you can take a look at this yourself. But the TLDR is that it's a use of statistics graph. Our uh, x-axis, the horizontal one, represents time. It looks like it starts from about uh, 2000, whenever month that was, all the way up till the modern 2023, 2024 era. You know, but the last like really clear line is like right after 20, after 2021, 2022, which is pretty cool. Oh, it's March 2003. Okay, it's March 2002. I can't, you know, those numbers are stacked on each other, so I can't read what they say, but I imagine it's like sometime 11, 2023, so like November of 2023, with the most visible one being February of 2021. And the y-axis is the number of websites that use jQuery. Oh my God. Uh, starting at zero, and it goes up to a cap of like 650,000, 650,000 at the top there of the line uh, of our uh, Y axis and our lines. We have a blue, a dark blue and a red line that we're looking at here. Maybe that's green, it's green is what it is. You know, uh, it's indicating whether they are in the top 10,000 or top 100,000 of websites, right? Or the top 1 million of websites as we're looking at. Uh, it's a total number of, yeah, it's a total number of websites that use jQuery. And so I think it's insane that a total live site listing of 78 million sites still use jQuery across the world. That is pretty insane, if I do say so myself. And we only see like a dip, a plateauing of jQuery usage in late 2022, before 2023. That's pretty crazy to think that this, uh, you know, very old framework is still alive and kicking, and that's mostly thanks to, you guessed it, WordPress. I mean, last I had checked, WordPress is still like almost a third of all live websites, and all those plugins and installations and things like that for WordPress typically are built and using jQuery. So if you want to carve out a niche in your programming knowledge and find yourself some steady and maybe boring level work, depending on how you look at it, I think you know learning all things is fun. But, uh, you know, 
carve carve yourself out a niche. Get some get some good experience with jQuery, WordPress, and you could still find plenty of steady work out there, even though it's not the hot new tech that everyone is using and saying, oh, just do this stack. This is the way to go. Like a lot of our videos are, you know, Mern stack where I do a uh, typically MySQL or Postgres backend, a Node Express server of some kind, and a React frontend of some kind with ES build these days as my bundler. And TypeScript, so I mean, I use a very modern tech stack, but I'm still v fairly familiar with jQuery and things like that. And one of my uh, fu most fun points, like kind of learning uh, jQuery stuff was encountering Kit Boga. I'm, I'm not affiliated with him in any way. If he gave, you know, I'm gonna give this guy a shout out. We're a tiny creator compared to him. Uh, but there's this clip from 2019 of Kit Boga literally uh, coding a How do you uh, just extension. Does this return like an array? Like, what is, is it? Array, EQ like we saw in the deprecated zero areas, right? or so something? We're looking at a, a clip from Kit Boga. I'll put the description down below. Does this get the first element? How do we get the first element? That first? I don't know. That's the funny part about jQuery is that you just chain on random words and function parentheses and, and function invoking parentheses right there. And it's pretty much the way to go about jQuery. So I found this clip funny because, again, like <laughs> uh, this was him building the Google Play Store uh, Chrome extension that allowed him to do a man in the middle attack. Again, if you're not familiar with Kit Boga, he basically will try and reverse speed run by burning as much time as he can with like uh, individuals that would scam, say your grandparents or technologically illiterate parents and things like that of money. With uh, web-based scams, he actually will take those phone calls and mess with them for as long as possible, modulating his voice, building fake bank websites, uh, and running like a virtual operating system that will completely mess with individuals. And it's actually really, it's, it's a great content to watch. And that's why I want to share it here because I also saw that a lot of his extensions and websites, he built at the fake banks using jQuery behind the scenes. And you know, that was, it was back in like 2019 when this clip came around Yeah, five years ago. Oh my God, I'm old. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool seeing him still, you know, he was using jQuery at a time when, you know, 4.0 was now yet, obviously. And he was still using it and building some awesome content out of it, right? So someone, if you want this clip, I'll put it in the description down below. Um, that parent. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, y'all, y'all check out his stream and his YouTube content, function. his compilations, his, his edited content. So can we capture four, five, this? Six hour stream. You can, uh, you can just watch like 30 minute highlight the videos of his content. They're pretty cool. But yeah, he goes ahead and captures an event here with some jQuery functions basically to make sure that uh, he can intercept a click on the redeem button click. Yeah, and he oh, captures the alert right there. Baby, we can't. <laughs> so, you know, it was one of those things that I came across, like I was, I was binging his content back then, and I remember looking over at my side monitor and being like, yo, he's using jQuery in 2019. And I thought that was pretty cool. And again, one of the points where I was like, we definitely got to keep it in our course because you never know. You never know what you're going to encounter, and you also appreciate how far vanilla JavaScript has come along thanks to the innovations and the era of jQuery, which is pretty crazy to me, right? So, yeah, um, I, you know, there that's about all I really had to say here. I mean, you know, I, I know the narrative is that there was a lot of jQuery as obsolete narrative, mostly on Reddit, honestly. I don't see it so much anywhere else, but... Uh, you know, maybe you come in, came in here with a negative opinion of it, and maybe you're leaving with a tepid opinion of it, or still hate it. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to really change your mind. I'm here to just, you know, kind of uh, get a discussion going. But, you know, it, it continues to go boldly where many have gone before, and somehow it remains, like, uniquely indispensable. I mean, it's easy to use. It has a concise syntax. Uh, it's very accessible for beginners, and time. it can be a good time saver for, you know, more seasoned developers. Um... And that vast ecosystem of those WordPress plugins or specific functionalities, there's probably a jQuery plugin for it. It's an insane ecosystem. And the amount of community support and discussions you can find on the web and old forum threads utilizing it or solving problems with it, I mean, that's also, I think, very important. And it's how, you know, it's established. It has, you know, an, an entire history of solving problems with it that you can draw upon when you're coding with it and trying to figure out how to do something yourself, you know? So like I said, upgrading it, just link it to their CDN. And I like how they said that, you know, even though they dropped the legacy browser support that if you needed it, even their own words were like, hey, if you need it, our solution is just keep, yeah. <laughs> Here's our solution. If you need if you need IE 11 and older support, then here's our solution. Just use the older version of jQuery. Symbolize, bruv. 
and Robert's your father's brother. Just just stick with jQuery 3x, and that's how you're gonna keep the old browser support if you need it. So yeah, I uh, gave you all a TLDR, covered some of the points of what jQuery 4.0 beta is here. Like I, I was just stunned to see jQuery back in my headlines in 2024. And I decided to make a video on it to uh, help boost some awareness. And I wanted to get a discussion going because I'm curious, what's, what's y'all's like most memorable project using jQuery if y'all started out with that? I can share some of my code pens or websites if y'all are interested. Um, any cool challenges you came out, you like overcame with jQuery? I mean, we all kind of have like that nostalgic, anyone that's been coding for you know years at this point has some kind of nostalgia experience with, uh, with jQuery. And I don't know, do you see it impacting the future of web development? Do you think it's going to regain as much popularity as it used to have or compared to the newer frameworks these days? Um, so yeah, get in the comments, let me know, share anything that you build with jQuery or things that with jQuery that, I don't know, gave you aha moments or things like that. And as always, do the YouTube stuff. Give us, give this video a like to help us out in the algorithms. We're small, but I love making content and learning things to help teach others. If you have any ideas for, you know, content you would like to see, let me know in the in the comments down below. Check out Covalence's community membership for access to our full stack program and my comprehensive React course. It's in the description down below. Covalence community membership, $25 a month. Any updates to our courses or new courses that I'm adding in the, in the process of adding, you will get in that for free. You also get access to me and our community in Discord as well. But if you're not, don't worry about it, right? I'm not trying to sell y'all here. I'm just saying if you want to if you want to get some uh, bumper lanes in your in your development journey. Uh, some helpful mentors and things like that. Give us a shot. Give us a shout out. Uh, yeah, subscribe, like, do the YouTube stuff. But uh, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this video and maybe you're as surprised as I was to see jQuery pop up in 2024. I'm gonna go build something with it just for fun. Uh, maybe one of my old projects or a lab in one of our courses that are later in the in the course that are done with React. I might just do it with jQuery, see if I can do some cool state management with it. So yeah, see y'all and get in the comments and let me know what you think.